All right, if you are into true crime series or podcasts, and there is two events you're going to want to check out, Windy, Wicked, and Wild, the sinister history of criminal Chicago. Here with all the details is homicide investigator and criminal behavioralist Sarah Kalen. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. This is so exciting because we were just talking a few minutes ago. Who doesn't love a true crime story? Everybody wants to delve into the details. And Chicago has some of the most oh, yeah. infamous ones, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think what people are going to really like about this one is, you know, anybody can go to Wikipedia or watch kind of the same old ones over and over again. So when I was writing the show just for Chicago, I tried to really dig deep and find some cases that maybe people aren't as familiar with all the all the ins and outs. And then we will talk about a couple of the big ones, but we're going to examine them maybe through a little bit different lens than people are used to. Picking up on cold cases, I imagine obviously very difficult that's why they're cold but where do you even begin is it combing through the evidence that was already collected do you go down a different route completely well every investigator might have their own way of doing it for me I like to go back through the original investigation, whether it's simply one file or, you know, boxes and boxes and boxes. And I literally start with a spreadsheet. I'm I'm that, you know, hard type A nerd and I build a <laughs> spreadsheet and I color code everything. A friend of mine called me the Marie Kondo of crime <laughs> when he saw my layout, yeah. you know, because I really, I feel like I go through get super organized with literally every single name, address, phone number, license plate number, everything that was ever taken in about that case. And then it's then I go back through and it's easier for me to cross check and look at things and say, hey, this guy popped up two or three times when the original investigators maybe hadn't hadn't noticed that stuff like that. Okay, you're looking at it from a different lens. Let's talk about some of the cases that mm. you're going to be talking about. Sure. Um, so one of them is the case that basically created the the musical or the Broadway musical Chicago. Yes, this is one of my all-time favorites. I'm really excited to do this one. So it's actually the story of two women, um, Belva Gardner and Beulah Anon, and then a third woman who was the crime writer. This is in the 1920s. Um, um, this incredible female crime writer, Maureen Dallas Watkins, who followed the stories of these two women who were in the press a lot for the murders they'd committed. Um, and, and we're going to talk a lot about the different cases, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how Maureen went on to write first the play, and then Kander and Ebb made it the musical and everything. So, And it's actually much closer to reality than people realize. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. the, the play is. Yeah. yeah, the play and the musical, the stories of Velma Kelly and, and Roxy Hart are really pretty close to what Belva and Beulah were getting up to. Also, it's the the Sausage King of Chicago, yes. and you and I are emailing a little bit about this, and I yes. went into a deep dive on it afterwards. Yes. It's fascinating. It is fascinating, and it's not Abe Froman or Ferris Bueller. <laughs> right. People are going to be surprised. Um, so, yeah, this was another really fascinating case um, of, uh, of a man who wanted to uh, maybe go off with his mistress and was a little tired of his wife and thought he was more clever maybe than he really was. Okay, so is that what the case, because you're still an actual investigator, mm -hmm. you do still deal with real cases yep. that are cold cases, is it the case that you find that most murders are committed by people that are close to them, it's more intimate than it is just random? Oh, absolutely. Statistically, I think, I want to say it's in, you know, 60 to 70 percent of murders are committed by somebody that the victim knew, and in the case of women, it's upwards of 80 percent were committed by an intimate partner or a spouse so it you know I mean the joke in true crime is it's always the husband and yeah. unfortunately it's pretty close to almost oh. always oh, the husband man. yeah man. Also, I always wonder too you know w when these cases go cold and you think about the cases back in the 20s and it was very different right yeah. compared to the technology we have today is it typically an error in law enforcement or was it somebody really good at planning their crime it can be a bit of both. Okay. It can be a bit of both. I mean, yeah, like you said, things are just done differently now. But even as recently, I mean, there's a case I've, I'm working on in South Alabama, and this was a case from 1993. And though they didn't have, you know, DNA to the same degree that we do now, and profiling wasn't the same as it is now, they did still have a lot of the same tools available that we would use. Um, and there were still, unfortunately, some some mistakes in the early days that allowed it to go cold. That I think that you know the detectives that I'm working with now were we 
we've been able to remedy. Okay, that makes me think of the death of Michael Jordan's father. Yes, Never. absolutely. And you're finding that, you know, it used to be somewhat of a, a terrible joke that most of the people on death row are innocent mm -hmm. or, you know, people in jail are innocent. And you're, we're sadly finding out that a lot of it were, they were. Yeah, that's, that's also true, unfortunately. Um, I, I spent this summer working uh, with the New England Innocence, well, working for an attorney who's working with the New England Innocence Project on a wrongful conviction case in New Hampshire. And it is, um, it's startling and sad how often uh, how often wrongful convictions happen and how often even they're based in false confessions uh, you know and and so it's really important to reevaluate these cases and and unfortunately most of these people mostly men but not exclusively will will sit in you know with life sentences or even death sentences for 20 or 30 years before they can be remedied um, even when when the evidence is there yeah, something we've certainly seen here yeah. in Chicago we've for, seen for decades. Quite a bit. Yeah. Quite yeah. A bit. Yeah. Look, but let's get back to this to the, your event. This is this is a it, it's it's fun because it's it's history. It's in the past and it's not necessarily affecting anybody right now. Right. So when someone comes to your event, what will they get? What, what will they experience? So I like to say that um, everybody's going to have a lot of fun, but I'm going to sneak some learning in there too. <laughs> okay. And that's what I like to, you know, that's what I really like to do. And I think for anybody who's reluctant, you know, there is sort of, um, for people who aren't as in tune with the, you know, kind of the true crime world or whatever, there is this concern about how can you make violent crime fun? And I talk about this at the opening of all of my events. And for me, the easiest answer there is that I only ever punch up. So, you know, in my real work, I because I work cold cases and I work a lot of cases with victims from marginalized communities, um, the victim's honor and integrity is at the forefront for me no matter what I'm doing, even at these events. Mm -hmm. So we laugh at idiot criminals and we sometimes laugh at bad police work, um, but we are always um, honoring the victims in in all of my work and so I promise it's okay to come and to have fun and we're gonna do it respectfully and everybody's gonna gonna learn a little something yeah about it's how always the real truth so fascinating detective too. work is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. and profiling in particular which is you know getting a lot of attention now um, but has been you know something that that has been building and building and and getting better and better through the course of, of law enforcement in the last 30 or 40 years well Sarah thank you so much for being here thank we already you. had the information on the screen for the two events you're hosting here here right. in oh, Chicago. Awesome. Yeah, thank so you. Exciting. All right, Sarah, thank you.